I think what I really like is that it's truly preloaded. So there's no fiddling around. Uh, it's very simple to put the viscoelastic in, hand it to the surgeon, and off you go. So it it's, it's truly is preloaded, very straightforward, very quick. It's a nice, easy injector to, do, to use and quite predictable as well. I would say it's essential that their team know that the priming of the lens is really important and to get the timing right between fully priming the cartridge and closing the door. Um, the timings like for, are really important to get the lens sitting correctly in that cartridge before you inject it and then you won't have any problems. And the other thing I'd say is that a really steady, smooth injection, don't take too long over it. You don't need to rush it. It will unfold quite gently. It is, uh, it's a good unfold and it's quite predictable in the eye, but I would go smooth and steady, not too slow, not too fast. Uh, luckily I don't have cash racks yet. If I did, I would, since I've been using the uh, EMV, the Ray1 EMV, I really like the way it's performing. I would certainly now, I'm getting a little bit presbyopic. I would certainly consider a bit of monovision for myself. And I think the beauty of the EMV, why I love it for my uh, private patients, uh, those are the ones I'm using it currently, is it's, it's very forgiving. I don't overpromise. Um, it's a great distance lens uh, with a little bit of monovision into the equation, then I think you can get really nice outcomes for your patients. And they're, they're very happy. And I feel it's very, very safe. I would be very particular about my visual outcomes. So personally, I wouldn't want to go for a multifocal, but I might want a bit more than a distance. I think having a little bit of near as well. And I think the EMV is able to give you a little bit more than just monovision with another lens. So that currently, after a short experience, would be my lens of choice. Uh, that's easy. Um, the Rainer factory is very close to my, uh, my unit. Um, it's about an hour and a half drives away. So I've had several situations where I phoned up our, um, our Rainer guy and have said to him, I'm really sorry. You know, the Toric I ordered last week, I actually got it wrong and, or it's a different patient and I need this one tomorrow. Can you get me one in time? And he's like, yeah, no problem. I'll be there. And so I think that that speed of service, it's always nice using a, a manufacturer in your, own in your own country. That's just, that's something new for us. And I really like it. It's like a local service, but with a, a brand that you know is an international brand with a great reputation. And so uh, that's really nice. I've enjoyed that link with a local service. it's very important to use the correct K readings and you should use that from the biometer. The biometer that you're using, whether it's IOL Master, LensStar, you should use those K readings. You may actually get a very pretty picture with your Pentacam, MS39, or whatever you're using to look at your topography, uh, but actually you shouldn't substitute those K readings when you're calculating your toric lens. You need to use the biometer Ks, albeit look at the topography or, and see what sort of corner it is. Is there a surprise there? So use the case from your biometer, absolutely use the posterior corner. You must look at that. And so far, using the, the sort of fudge factor, the abulafia Koch uh, adjustments, the posterior corneal adjustments, they are, they perform really, really well. And actually probably just as well as doing a bespoke calculation for each patient. So you must use those. They're very, very important. And so you always got to have that box ticked unless you've got a very good reason not to use that. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it's a, it greatly improves the predictability of your toric lenses. As far as the lens goes itself, the Ray 1 toric and the EMV toric, they're nice and stable. They're like a lot of the toric lenses I've used nowadays. I don't think rotation is a massive problem. It's very, very rare that I bring my patients back to theater to do a rotate of a lens. And in fact, I do a telephone follow-up for many of my patients. I don't even need to check them in in clinic necessarily. They'll be, because uh, you, you can tell that they're happy and they're seeing really well. Um, if there's any issue, you can see them in person, but it makes a very efficient service. The level of cylindride used for a toric lens, it depends a little bit on whether it's a public or private patient. So for our public patients, our Delta K levels at my unit are two. Anything above two will use a toric lens. Uh, whether that's with the rule or against the rule. 
and, and that's what I stick by. For my private patients, I want to, uh, I would rather use a toric lens for, let's say, one diopter of against the rule stigmatism. I'll use a toric lens for that rather than putting some AKs on the cornea. We've got a femto at my unit, so I have used femto AK, AKs quite a lot, but I think a toric lens is a bit more predictable for that. And so uh, my my choice would be uh, to use a toric lens even with quite low cylindrical, or sorry, I should say delta K uh, differences of like one, even down to 0.75 diopter in a in an against the rule um, pattern, I would consider using a toric lens for that. I go really low uh, for for the against the rule ones.